Yeah, I think number one, what an awesome, awesome atmosphere. I mean, having the students back, you know, makes a big difference. The band, I mean, just a great environment for a college basketball game. And for a Tuesday night to have 6,811 people, you know, I, I appreciate it. Our guys appreciate it. And uh, hopefully we can, can uh, keep building on that. But I uh, thought our guys played a really good game, uh, controlled, you know, pretty much the whole game. We knew it was going to be tough. Um, you know, coming in, we wanted to try to get to the foul line more and, and out-rebound them. Uh, kind of what they what they did to us last year, and um, I thought our guys did a really good job of being in attack mode. Certain guys, you know, different guys stepped up at different times. Uh, you know, hit some big free throws to kind of keep it at that six, seven, eight uh, point mark there late in the game, and uh, you know, we did a great job of finishing the game. Yeah, I thought Tommy, you know, did really well playing extended minutes, which he's never played this whole year. And, you know, the thing with Tommy, he, I mean, he set the tone from the start, full court defense, you know, getting those loose balls and, and making it hard for those guys to bring the ball up. And, you know, it's, it's hard when you expend that much energy, right, defensively, and then you ask him to do offensively the same thing. And, you know, he's really, really good at just probing, getting in the paint, creating for other guys. You know, he's got his little flick, uh, flick, quick layup that he does. Uh, made some great reads, and you know those were huge threes he hit. On a night when you didn't get much out of Ben, or, or not a typical Ben for Vanderbilt's kind of night, um, AJ Clayton stepped over the career high. What, is that something that you know he can shoot? But is he now in the position to earn more minutes because of the other stuff he's doing? Was this just a natural progression for him? Uh, how would you assess where AJ Clayton? Yeah, that kid's going to be special. <laughs> when he realizes how good he can be, you know, he's just kind of still out there playing. Even when he got the ball in the second half, you know, uh, I think it was a rebound or a loose ball, and he ended up losing it, throwing it out, and it was a, a turnover. You know, he's got to learn just a one power dribble, you know, go up and hook shot or dunk it. I mean, he's one of our most athletic guys. He's 240 pounds. And, you know, with him, you know, he missed that one three, uh, I think he airballed it maybe, but just a confidence thing. And one of the best things he does is shoot the three. And he had some really big minutes, you know, when, when Ben was in uh, foul trouble there. And, uh, you know, obviously hit those threes in the second half. So I thought our bench was really good. You know, I thought Sam Towns did a lot of really good things defensively. Uh, kept some balls alive. Uh, got two offensive rebounds. And even IJ, I know he only played a minute and 41 seconds, but, you know, he had a big rebound. His physical presence, um, you know, was, was big. No, I mean, and I think the biggest thing is just having maturity, you know, going game by game, day by day. And, you know, we always talk about it. You know, winning's hard. <laughs> it's hard to win. And don't ever get tired of preparing to win and don't ever get tired of winning. Like, like celebrate that thing because you don't know when the next one's coming and you put so much time and effort into it that you, you want to enjoy it. But the biggest thing is just having maturity. Um, you know, we have, we have a pretty good veteran group of guys who understand and, you know, I think as a coaching staff, we have to, under, like, let them know how to handle prosperity, right, how to handle adversity. And sometimes, you know, you, when you don't handle prosperity, it bites you. And, you know, we're not good enough just to roll the ball out. I'm not going to outcoach anybody. You know, we're not going to outplay anybody. we got to go out there and execute. we got to play with an edge, uh, a resiliency, which we've been doing. And we've been finding ways to win, which I think is a sign of a great team. You guys have lost, uh, you guys have lost the last three meetings against Bowling Green. What is that? No. Uh, I think if you look at the last three games, the first two, you know, we had a double figure big lead in one half and they won the second and vice versa. And then last year's game was the first game, you know, Jason Preston was hurt, pulled his hamstring, um, you know, and coming out uh, Christmas break and it was like a foul fest. You know, I think they, we, they shot like 40 some free throws. So that wasn't really on our minds. I think different team, different year. You know, they got a lot of transfers. Who I mean, they've gotten better every game. You know, I think just the chemistry-wise, and you know, that's a good team. Uh, do you have any update on Miles Brown? Um, I think he's in the COVID protocols. He you know, could stay him back this week. Do you have any update with Miles? 
Yeah, I think uh, I think we should have him back. Um, you know how much he'll do, I'm not sure. I think you know the biggest thing is just health and safety and wellness of him, making sure he's okay before he does anything. Um, but we, we should, uh, I, th I think we should have him back. And his brother Michael's no longer on your roster. Do you have any comment about what's, what's going on with him? No, my, Mike. Uh, you know th those two are really tight, and he he has some you know stuff off the court you know interest and. You know, I think with everything we've been through, you know, he, he's a great teammate. You know, I still talk to him today. Uh, he's still in classes. You know, just the whole grind of, you know, being a, a Division One athlete, you know, he, he wanted to step away, which we were fine with. Given, given those situations, has it been a problem or an issue just running practice, again, with, with the lack of guards, with the lack of uh, to put out someone that can mimic a point guard for the opposition? Have you had to change anything? Some of those personal, personal issues in the yeah, I mean, you know, Norman Tommy, you know, plays on the second team, but we've been playing those two together, and you know, that's really why we, you know, added Josh McDaniel and and Luke Frazier, you know, just to give us some practice depth, and um, you know, those two are both, you know, good players. They're functional. Josh played three on three, you know, after practice with you know DJ to try to get him back a little bit, and and uh, you know, he played in high school. He knows how to play, so that's a big reason why we did that. Yeah, I, th I mean that's something we've emphasized from day one. Just our length and athleticism. I think uh, you know the the IQ our guys have, um, you know, plays into that. And you know, you look at Jason Carter. I mean, J Jason Carter's an elite defender. You know, not only on the ball. I mean, he guarded you know three men in the Big East for two years. You know, and and uh, he, he's a great team defender. And you know, he just. You know, covers up a lot of things. You know, allows you to switch and do some th different things that we normally wouldn't be able to do uh, if he wasn't in there. But I think our guys have really bought in. You know, uh, we, we always have a goal: 40% field goal, 30%, you know, from three, 25% uh, miss uh, or less missed blockouts. Uh, I thought our blockouts were really good. They averaged 14 offensive rebounds coming in the game. Only had eight, and a big reason, you know, with Joe Reese being out, you know, he he uh, was a big, you know, part of that offensive rebounding. Um, you know, so that was a, a big key for us. Obviously, Jason Carter transferred back this year. How much, you know, what kind of leader has he been among the group of guys uh, this season? Could you give that? Yeah, I mean, he, he didn't miss a beat. You know, I think it, it just helped the camaraderie that he and BVP had. Um, you know, he didn't know a lot of the other guys because they weren't here when he was here. And you know, I think he's having fun. You know, <laughs> he's back to having fun. He's, he just comes to practice every day. He works extremely hard before and after practice on his shot. You know, come in, comes in and does extra. You know, he's already had a master's degree. He's on his second master's degree, and you know, so he's able to spend a lot of time. And you know, I think the big thing is just you know, he's got a lot of miles on his wheels. You know, just kind of maintaining his you know maintenance for his body and trying to limit maybe some practice reps because he he, he works out. And I think when he first got here, that was one of his problems. I think he had a foot injury or something. Yeah. Um, so we got to kind of be careful with him. You know, you know, it's funny. It's like, like he didn't play great, but he had 19 and six, and he was a little bit down. I'm like, my man, like, people are going to game plan for you. They're going to try to take you out. They're going to be physical with you. And when you're, when you're, you know, not so great game is 19 points and six rebounds and hit 10 for 10. Like the kid is really good, and, and you know, as a coach, I got to figure out ways to put him in position. You know, figure out how teams are going to guard him, and you know, he's never had to do this. So it's a learning experience for him, and and uh, you know he was a little bit down, but I'm like ten for ten. You, <laughs> you know you close the game out, Mario on a Rivera style, and uh, you know he'll come in tomorrow. He'll watch tape on his own, and and uh, he'll he'll continue to get better. You know we've we've talked about that. Like he's still got room for growth. He's never been through this before in this in this uh, you know role, and uh, you know he's as hard as him, on himself as anybody is. But like you said, he had 19 and six. Yeah, I was, I was, I was 
this win streak kind of affected how you guys playing games? You know, going into the season, you guys were the team to beat, the team to knock off. And on this win streak now, you guys are still the team to beat. You've got players to play, players that other teams are going to be playing against and making big plans against. Kind of how does that change your approach to the season and looking at the next game? Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing is maturity. Like, understanding you can get beat on any night. I mean, there's so much parity in college basketball. And you could have a poor 10 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, 40 minutes, and lose no matter who you play. And, you know, I mean, we saw that. We played Concordia, right? We're down at halftime. <laughs> we were down. Like, those guys were feeling it. They were, they were confident. And I think it seems like two years ago, by the way. And, um, you know, I think just the, the maturity coming in every day and understanding we have to prepare the right way. We have to act the right way. You know, we have to study the right way. We have to watch film the right way. We have to practice the right way, everything. And, you know, I always say this. When I was at Ohio State, you know, we were 34-3, and three, number one in the country. And that team had the maturity, and they brought their A game every game. You know, it didn't matter who they played. And, uh, you know, hopefully our guys keep, you know, preparing the right way, which I think they will. All right, thanks, guys. All right, thank you. See you all.